Well, coming up on today's show, we'll take a look at December's plug-in sales figures. The good, the bad, and the good again, actually. Uh, More BMW iX3 spy shots. This could be a big car for BMW. And Tesla's new patent hints at more reliable batteries. Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's Thursday, the 3rd of January, and it's Martin Lee here. I've been through all the EV stories I can find today and picked out the news you need. Well, thank you to myev.com for helping make this show. It's the world's first marketplace, all about buying and selling and learning about EVs as well. And they're constantly adding stock. Maybe you had a look at this web site the first time I told you about it and you've not looked since worth a relook. Is that a word? Relook. Let's call it a word. And then you can see you might see loads more uh, inventory. I think they in the trade they call it inventory. More cars. Uh, if you like uh, me, enjoy a bit of window shopping sometimes. Go and have a check out at uh, myv.com. Welcome to the newest member of our gang and the latest executive producer of the show. Yes, I'm talking to you Alexander Frank. Thank you so much, Alexander Frank, for joining up exec producer level. Uh, We couldn't do the show without you. I'll add your names to the show notes. Every single show that we publish, I will put you on there as a big thank you so much for your support. And everyone, by the way, on Patreon who supports the show. Uh, I promise that uh, with each each, dona- each donation, whatever it's called, support, I guess they call it, uh, I promise to work harder and promote clean air and the fun of having an EV. Well, it's the start of the month, so I'm inevitably going to be talking about the Inside EVs plug-in sales scorecard. They work their socks off, by the way, to look at the US figures of EV sales. Uh, don't tend to do... They did some stories around the world, but real specialists on uh, on the US sales. Let's get this one out there then. December uh, 2018, last month, was the best ever month for US EV sales in history. 45,000. 500-ish and counting. That easily tips over the 350,000 round number for the year. 350,000 EVs sold this year in North America. Good number. I mean, it's a big number. A reminder of yesterday's show, by the way, and indeed the benchmark for all other EVs. I was telling you about the Model 3. Uh, Tesla Model 3 delivery set a new record in December at 25,250 is the Inside EV's estimate. Uh, That's what was uh, sold in the US based on Inside EV's estimates and the automaker's quarterly report. Let's start with GM. And for the fourth quarter, Chevrolet reported 6,200 and 12 Bolt EVs, and just over 5,000 volts were sold. Now, a big number for the Volt, but that could be, I'm guessing, because they're selling off inventory. Of course, the Volt stops production very soon now that we are in 2019. That's a real shame, if you ask me, actually. Uh, according to our research, says Inside EVs, GM sold 1,412 Bolt EVs for the month and 1,058 plug-in volts for the month of December. So the first numbers were the quarter, second numbers being the month of December. So uh, as the Model 3 was selling 25,000 Model 3s in the month of December, the Bolt selling 1,412. Well, as for the Nissan Leaf, deliveries are up at 1,667. In fact, it's the best US number for the 2018 Nissan Leaf to date. Eric Loveday writes that looking at the year-to-date figures for the Leaf, uh, the cumulative sales for the year 2018 was uh, just a bit shy of 15,000. That's an improvement on the 11,000 sold in 2017, but still, it's a disappointment. If you think about the best of times, when back in 2014, the Nissan Leaf would sell 30,000 of them in a year. In that time, fast forward four or five years, battery technology has improved greatly. Battery pack sizes have generally increased uh, across the board. The Leaf has a great reputation, a big charger base with the Chatamo connections, and plenty of people who probably would have traded in their first or second gen Leaf for the the third one. So that's kind of weird that they were selling 30,000 Leafs a few years ago, and now they're down to just 14,715 for... The new version, the 40 kilowatt hour Leaf, that's, it seems like a disappointment. I know it's up on last year, but it still seems strange. What about the plug in car from the company that here in the UK is constantly reminding us you shouldn't plug your EV in? Uh, that would be the Prius Prime. 
Now, here in the UK, the uh, Toyota brand go really big on TV advertising, social advertising, saying, uh, don't plug in your EV, their EVs are self-charging. That's the phrase they use, which is very naughty indeed. Uh, Of course, they don't charge unless you put fossil fuels inside them. Unless, of course, you live at the top of a very big hill and you use your car once, ever, to get to the bottom of the hill. In which case, it'll charge itself. But if you want to go back up the hill, by the way, and use your car a second time you're going to have to put fossil fuels inside it at some point. And that's not an EV. So anyway, they call themselves charging. And this is kind of awkward, whereas in the US, they are selling a car with a plug on it. And the Toyota Prius Prime uh, did pretty well in de- in December. The deliveries were almost 3,000. It takes the yearly, by the way, 2018, the yearly second spot with 27,595 ahead of the Model S and ahead of the Model X as well. So in the US, they are really big on selling an EV with a plug. And yet in the UK, they were trying to convince us that plugging in would be a terrible idea. I just think that Toyota think we're stupid and, and that we live in a world where there's not a global media now. Anyway, uh, what about the car that I rarely talk about, the Honda Clarity? Well, Inside EV say we're happy to report that Honda sold a total of 2,857 Clarity vehicles in December in the US. Our research indicates that uh, 2,787 of them were plug-in hybrids. It's the car's uh, best showing of all time by leaps and bounds, by the way. Um, I I can understand the people that are saying, hang on. GM are saying with the Chevy Volt, there is no market for plug-in hybrid cars. And then with the Prius Prime and the Honda Clarity, they're going, there's a really big market for plug-in hybrid cars. And that's where people start to then have a go at automakers like like GM. Well, finishing off the I-Pace, the I-Pace sold 223 in December. Before you say that's a very low number... I'll beat you to it. It's a very low number. Again, it's estimated. In the comments section of the article, by the way, Stephen uh, does say, and I quote, Jaguar is not reporting any individual model numbers for the US, let alone the I-Pace, end quote. That makes it very hard uh, for these guys who do an amazing job estimating these figures. They're they're normally pretty bang on as well. Uh, The Jaguar I-Pace, by the way, sold 2,600 and a bit last month in the Netherlands. So they're making them, they're making plenty of them as well, by the way, but they're selling them to begin with in EV-friendly markets and kind of Northern Europe. And so the cars are out there, but they're not in America yet. Uh, Clearly stock is being sold in certain places. So before you think, hang on, they're not making any of the I-Pace, they're making, they're making them. Uh, Well, Jaguar aren't making them, they they outsource it. That's a different story. Uh, But uh, they are being sold in some parts of the world. Oh, and congratulations, a huge congratulations to Hyundai for their sales last month of their brand new Nexo fuel cell vehicle. In the month of December, they sold one. You know, all you've got to do is sell two and you've made a 100% improvement. Congratulations to the buyer of their fuel cell car. I'll put links to those EV articles in the show notes. Sorry, I'm just being cheeky there. Fuel cell's got a future, just not with personal transport, but for commercial vehicles and buses and trucks and maybe planes, I don't know, boats, uh, hydrogen, big future. For moving individuals from A to B, it's a terrible idea, but it does mean that you'd have to carry on going to a pump, although you'd put in one kind of fuel rather than gas. And of course, I can imagine plenty of people that would like to keep the way things are because they're making plenty of money uh, that way. And also, you've got to ask where hydrogen comes from as well. What's the power used to produce it? If you're just burning fossil fuels... Uh, Maybe it's not such a good idea. But anyway, that's not an anti-hydrogen rant. That's just me being cheeky. Okay, let's move on to BMW and the iX3 is currently undergoing tests to be ready for the launch in 2020 as the first BMW based on the fifth gen drivetrain is coming, says uh, Mark Kane for Inside EVs. Yeah, this is uh, this is interesting. This fifth generation drivetrain for BMW won't make its way into the Mini Electric, which I think is a real shame. Mini Electric coming this year. The Mini... Not so Mini anymore, by the way. When you see a Mini up close, uh, you, you, I always think, that's a big car now. Um, the drivetrain of that is not going to be as 
sophisticated as as modern as well designed as the fifth generation drivetrain from BMW which is going in the iX3 I think that's a, that's a pity that they because uh, the, 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 the mini electric has the ability if it's priced right to be a good seller as I've said before I think it'll be priced pretty high because the BMW brand want to keep it pretty premium the iX3 is still partially camouflaged in these pictures that uh, that Mark's put up in his article. But uh, in general, it looks like BMW is following a similar route uh, to Mercedes-Benz with the EQC body style, very similar to the SUV style, which is incredibly popular. The iX3 is going to be very similar to the X3 on the exterior, and that's such an important car for BMW. Uh, the X3 and I suppose all of the the kind of the X range hugely important to bmw so to electrify those is kind of a big deal well a new tesla patent hints at more reliable batteries through a new kind of dynamic management system if you like simon alvarez at tesla rati says that considering tesla's reputation for never staying still it's certain the company's batteries will improve it was mentioned by the president of automotive jerome jerome guillen uh, to cnbc in that uh, that clip that i I played you on the podcast uh, podcast actually in November. He uh, he noted the company's technology evolves. He mentioned some chemistry changes. Then he stopped going any further. Uh, now there's a new patent which points towards even more development. Tesla's patent describes what could be dubbed as, and I see if I can explain this, a redundant battery management system comprises of a first client coupled with a multi-channel, bi-directional and daisy-chained communication loop. The electric car maker also outlined a method for identifying a failure location within a BMS, a battery management system. Uh, Ultimately, Tesla notes that the systems will result in what they call dynamic redundancy across their battery management. Of course, they are working on a new generation of battery packs which are ultimately more reliable than their already very, very good battery packs. So they are leading the market with their their cell technology, with their partnership with Panasonic, and their battery pack technology as well. And now they're looking to go even further with that. It's, it's interesting, you know, all the attentions on the Model 3 and forthcoming Model Y and, and Tesla Semi and all that kind of stuff. And it's interesting how many... Super brains must be working at Tesla, probably at the Gigafactory, I imagine, just constantly day in, day out, working on these little 1% or, you know, a tenth of 1% improvements, which, as you add them up, mean that you're, you're taking steps forwards, uh, not standing still. What would be the cliche in, uh, in the world of EVs? Uh, if you're standing still, you're going backwards. I quite like that. I'll use it again. Right, moving on to China. The Chinese government has announced plans to lower many of the EV subsidies for this year in 2019 by about a third, actually, compared to 2018, with the goal to end them in 2020. However, EVs with a range of over... 300 kilometers will receive more subsidies according to chris randall for his electrive article so starting in 2019 electric vehicles with a range of less than 150 k's no longer going to be subsidized mid-sized to large evs uh, with up to 400 kilometers range will get a 10 percent boost to their subsidies i think that i think i don't know correct me if i'm wrong i think they still use uh with the nedc cycle for calculating range so uh, which is enormously complimentary uh, by the way uh, and not that accurate uh, but if you know differently if trying to have their own way of measuring uh, then let me know uh, if you know more about that market than i do well on twitter today staying in china the twitter user kelvin yang posted a picture of a model 3 plugged in but with a difference Uh, He said in his tweet, Model 3 with China GB charge point spotted uh, running around, likely testing compatibility with public charging stations, end tweet. So back in 2017, Tesla added China's charge port. Their their weapon of choice is the GBT plug. And it's by far and away the biggest plug in the world, just simply because China use it and they've got a bazillion uh, charges. That's, I I think, a pretty close estimation of the number, by the way. I should have looked that up before I opened my big fat mouth. Alongside the Tesla charging port on the Model S and the Model X, they added it next to it. Now cars are testing in China, the Model 3 is testing in China, and they've added the ports to that as well. So you've got the GBT socket in China, because if you want to sell a car there, you have to really have that charger on it, because they are 
everywhere. So with Europe now adding the CCS combo plug, as well as the Tesla uh, Type 2, the Menekes, uh charge port, and now China having their own one, how long until in the US the Model 3 comes with a CCS combo port? We know that those super fast chargers with Electrify America are being rolled out now with the CCS combo plug and Chatamo at most of those stations, and they're going to be super fast we still haven't seen yet how quickly the model 3 can charge when connected to anything quicker than a tesla supercharger so quicker than 120 kilowatts so connected to a 350 for instance and how hard can you push a model 3 if you really want to get some juice into it you get that sort of like 10 or 20 percent battery state of charge and the batteries and all ready to take charge what's the quickest it could do there's been one pictured in europe On the Fastned chargers, Uh, Fastned were pretty quick to tweet out, hey, by the way, it's a test vehicle, we're not saying anything about it, Uh, but they would have that data, and that'll be fascinating. Okay, so it's not a lot, but moving on to our next story, four miles is four miles is four miles. Four miles more for the Tesla mid-range Model 3. Now, I don't think they're very keen on us talking about battery sizes anymore, not since the S and the X uh, used to have their names after the size of the battery pack they have moved away with that from that with the model 3 and so they probably wouldn't want me saying it's a 62 kilowatt hour pack uh, because it just wouldn't sound very good would it if you had a a kind of a badge on the back of your model 3 saying i don't know p62 you call it the p60 or p60d i suppose uh so if it's the the mid-range uh but uh uh, it's a 62 kilowatt hour pack and up until now it's been rated for 260 miles but on the epa website that 260 mile figure is supplemented with the phrase combined range voluntarily lowered to 260 miles Uh, so tesla have not changed anything they've not improved anything all they've done really is made an admin change and they've increased the range by not opting to lower it if that makes sense look they did the same with the long range battery with the dual motor and the rear wheel drive in that they have slightly different ranges but they opted to reduce so that they both they could say 310 miles for either if that makes sense but it's still an increase in the range of the mid-range battery except I guess it's not, because nothing technical's changed. (laughs) But you know what I mean. I'll put a link to the article in the show notes. Well, look, thank you so much for listening today. Another brilliant day of EV news. I was having a moment of zen today. I was uh, sitting on the train. I had had my headphones in, kind of in a world of my own, and I was flicking through my timeline, and it was unusually positive. My Twitter is normally a pretty good place, but today it was just, it was people were raving about the Tesla uh, Model 3 December numbers, the Q4 numbers, which are just, like, just stunning, breaking records, and just deliveries going through the roof. And then I saw a tweet from Christina Boo, I think that's how I say her name, from uh, the Norwegian EV Association. And she was talking about the incredible success that Norway had in the end of last year, uh, with a third of their cars being pure battery electric vehicles, almost half of new car registrations having a plug, and you know, a third being pure EVs. And just this kind of moment of, you know what? I think we're going to be okay. I think this is, last year was a turning point. This year's going to be a turning point. Everything just seemed to be bright today on my Twitter timeline. I got a moment of zen sitting on the train thinking, I think we're going to be okay. There's a lot of work to do. But I think we're going to get there. It's uh, it's going to be an incredible next few years. And uh, a little moment today of, eh, this feels nice. This feels good. I think, we're, I think we're going somewhere good. Well, thank you very much to myev.com for sending our question of the week. I would love for you, please, to send me your thoughts on this one. It's a really simple question this week, which they can be a bit harder sometimes. I sort of need thinking about. The question is, what's your EV prediction for 2019? can be anything, any subject, any topic. What's your EV prediction for 2019? Email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, my personal email address, or you can use the comment section of YouTube, Facebook, myev.com. Thank you to 151 patrons of the podcast, whose sheer generosity means that uh, you get to get this show for free every single day. Totally optional. I'd make it. I would make it whatever and find the money to pay for it. Uh, but if you can help support, I'd love to add your name to that list that you hear and that you see. Uh, Patreon.com. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com/slash-E-V-News. 
daily. Totally optional. Uh, but it's there if you are thinking of having a, just a little look at what it's all about. There are 345 episodes online in the archive now for free. Download any of them if you want to uh, from your favourite podcast app where you get podcasts from. Hit subscribe to get them first and free and automatically. And if you can, in return, leave a little review, you know, one star, five star, uh, that would be amazing, whatever you think that this podcast is worth. Uh, I know you're busy, but it'd be so cool if you could do that. Thank you so much. In the meantime, catch up on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.